Hello everyone, good morning, TGIF. Hello, TGIF. Morning. Does anyone know what today is? Today's date. What is today's date? Friday 13th. That's right. November 13th. Friday the 13th. Have you guys seen any of the Friday the 13th movies? <laughs> Has anyone seen the Friday? It's an old, they're old movies. But they're horror movies. Anyone seen uh, Friday the 13th? Yes. Yeah? So today's not going to be an unlucky day. It's going to be a lucky day because everyone's going to be finishing their assignments and trying to complete the task for today. And if you haven't already, go ahead and open up the form that I shared in the chat. And I also uploaded the audio for our next TOEFL review. So if you want to download it on your computer, if the internet is a problem for you, then I would recommend that you download the audio and start at 8.15 so that we all start more or less at the same time. Today we're going to complete our TOEFL review. I'm going to ask everyone again to continue their best to take notes, experiment with different ways of taking notes, and try to become familiar with listening to an audio and taking notes at the same time. I'm going to ask everyone to share their notes from today's activity at the end. When we finish, I'll give you more instructions about that. We'll also spend today finishing our famous person activity. Now, I'll say a few words before we start here about that activity, and then I'm, I'm going to explain even further what I'm, what I'm after, what I'm looking for. Some of you are asking me to look at your videos and to tell you specifically, is that enough? Is that, is that not? Uh, is it right? Is it wrong? And what I'm trying to do is to provide you enough feedback for you to look at your own work to see whether or not you are doing what's uh, what's expected, right? If you're completing the task as instructed. So what I'd like for you to do, not right now, but when we finish with this activity, is to continue looking at not only your video, but also compare what you have with some of your classmates. Uh, later today in class, I'm going to explain further like what I'm doing, how I'm evaluating uh, this task. And it's going to be up to you to determine whether you think you've met the requirements or if you haven't met the requirements. Okay, so we'll talk more about that after, um, after, this, uh, after the listening practice. But take a, a look, this activity, The Famous Person, is really an activity about not only speaking, but listening comprehension, listening for the instructions, understanding exactly what to do. Because again, these are very specific instructions that are uh, a part of this activity. Okay, but we'll, we'll talk more about that um, a little bit later after we finish our listening okay um we don't have class on monday right so make sure that uh for this week try to finish up all of the activities so that we start next week week 13 um all caught up try to catch up with any pending assignments if you're missing some podcasts try to complete those you know whatever you're missing try to to catch up so that we go into unit four, our last four weeks of class, all caught up. All right, we don't want to um, be overly stressed at the end of the semester by trying to catch up with, with homework. I know some of you are having challenges with technology, maybe you're having some family issues, and 
things are maybe uh, creating a challenge for you to to come to class or to complete the tasks. Remember, for our class, everything is in Notion, right? And everything that we're doing, including the videos, and we'll even look at another video today in Notion, but basically everything that we're doing is in Notion. So make sure that you're using that if you need it. If you are having a hard time finding out, well, what are we doing today? What did we do yesterday? Right. Um, I'm not really planning too much in the future, but you should be able to see everything that we're doing today and in the past in Notion. So you can go in and look at those calendar views day to day to see the specific activities. I'm trying to keep as much information there for you for that purpose, because maybe you miss a class. Right. You can figure out, well, what did we do today? I wasn't able to go to class. You can check Notion and you can find out, all right? Of course, you can ask questions and all of that, but make sure that you first consult Notion and you're, you're trying first to figure out what you missed by yourself, right? On your, on your own. All righty. Any other questions or comments you guys want to make before we get started? We got a few minutes here before we get, uh, get rolling. Ah, I almost forgot. The question of the day. My friends. The question of the day. When do you use the expression good night? Hmm. Good night. I hear this expression and I've heard it a lot this semester. In English, right? Good night. What is it? When do you use it? I think we know what it means, I mean, right? But what? when do we use it? Teacher. Yes. You tell me that good night It's used when, for example, in the podcast, um, we use it at the final of the podcast because it's like saying like, ya, ya, Dios, o sea, ya, 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 al final. Yeah, it, if I say to you, all of you, I'll say good morning, right? What's another, what am I really saying? What, what, what am I saying? When I say good morning. What's another, um, what am I doing? Nothing. Or what's another way of saying that? What, what's my intention? What am I, what am I saying? Good, when I say good morning. Saludo. I'm sorry. Um, saludo. Right. I'm. I'm saying hello. I could say, "Hey, hello, everyone." I could say that, or I could say, "Good morning." Right. It's. It's pretty much the same thing. If you see somebody in the hallway or in the street, and it's in the morning, you might say, "Good morning," but you're saying hello. You're saying hi. You're saying what's up. Right? And so that's a greeting for when you say somebody and you're saying hello. But good night is like saying goodbye. Right? Imagine you're going up to your friend, to your friend's house, and you open up the door and it's at nighttime and you say good night. You're basically, it's like saying you, you open the door and you're saying goodbye. And you'd be, that's, that's kind of weird, right? Usually it's like you're saying hello, goodbye right right back to back so so just remember that good night is when you're departing you're finishing the conversation you're you're basically saying goodbye think of good good night as goodbye and good morning is meaning hello now we also have good evening good evening so we can say good morning Good evening, good night. We could also say good afternoon. So what do you think? Good afternoon. Am I saying hello or goodbye? Or both? Or neither? If I say good evening. Am I saying hello, goodbye, or can it mean both? Or neither? Multiple choice question. 
Like, hello? That's right. Hello. I might come over to your house and I might say, good evening. I might even say, I hope everyone's having a good evening. You're saying hello. Now, if you're leaving, you might say, I hope everyone has a good evening. I hope everyone has a good afternoon. There is, that's, you're saying goodbye, but you're using the verb have. I hope you have a good evening. I hope you have a good morning. That's a, that's a saying goodbye. I hope you have a good morning. I hope you have a good day. That's a, sometimes we say that at the end of class. I might say, I hope you guys have a wonderful day today. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you have a great day. So you can use the verb to have. That's, that's what we use to say goodbye. All right. Um, so you can say good evening, good afternoon. That's, that's um, saying hello. And even if it's really late, you might say, well, can you say like you arrive at somebody's house at 10 o'clock at night and you come in and you say, good evening. Yeah. I mean, it's, it works, you know, it, it's not, you might think, well, it's kind of late to say good evening, but it's all right. It's, it's used and it's common and there's no problem with that, right? We're, we don't want to say though, good night. So when you're starting your podcast or you're starting a conversation or you're greeting someone and you're really meaning to say hello, remember, hello. be careful with good night because that's specific to meaning adios. Alrighty. So question of the day, when do you use good night? Now, when you're starting your podcast, if you're really, you know, if it's late, you might say, I hope everyone, hello, everyone. I hope you're having a good evening. That's, that's a good greeting. That's a good way to open up the conversation and greet someone for the first time. And that might be something that you include in your podcast. Remember to go ahead and finish up your podcast for this week. We'll have another one. Um, remember the key to the podcast is getting into those routines. The best thing, the best advice I can give everyone to get the most out of Prope and the most out of any learning experience is to define your routines. It's the habits. It's you are what you do on a regular basis. You, the person you are is directly related to the routines that you set for yourself. It could be related to health, right? Beauty, dietary requirements, learning of any kind. It's what you do day to day. It's the small things that you do every day. So that is the basis. That's really the, the purpose of these podcasts is to, number one, choose a topic that you like. And number two, hopefully get into routine every single day, even if it's five minutes, listening to something new. Listening to something you like, a topic or a subject, but you're learning something. You're le listening to something in English and you're saying, wow, I didn't know that, right? Or, you know, there's something that is interesting that you want to discuss later on. And you might find that you're listening to a lot of information throughout the week and you end up talking about a small part of that. That's even better. But get into those routines, define those routines that are going to make you a better person, that are, it's going to make you a better speaker, a better learner, a better student, better human being. Find those routines. All right, my friends. Teacher. Yes, ma'am. Uh, where I can find the audio? For the in double? the temp folder in Microsoft Teams. I'll always put it in the temp, T-E-M-P, the temporary folder in Microsoft Teams. And I always upload it at 8 o'clock. Okay, okay. So check that. Make sure you can find that if you want to download it. And if you're downloading, go ahead and, and begin. Uh, it's 8.15. Everyone should be able to refresh your browser and open up the okay. review. Okay, did you right find it? Okay, great. We'll start here in just a, a moment. Okay, just just want to do a sound check. Can you guys hear the audio, that little clip that I played? Yes, did you. All right.
All right, let's go ahead now. We'll, we're going to begin now our um, our TOEFL review. And again, I encourage everyone to take notes.
All right, guys. Wait just a minute or two to make sure your answers are complete. Go ahead and submit to the Microsoft Forms at this time. You have until 9.15 to, to upload it, so just make sure you upload it before, before then. I would go ahead and do that uh, right now. I'm sharing my screen also. Um, I would like everyone to go into Microsoft Teams under Files, Week 12, and I'm creating a folder called Hopeful 10 Week 12. Notes. All right, so if you go into the general tab under files, week 12, there's a folder called TOEFL 10 week 12 notes. I would like to ask everyone to take a picture of the notes that you've created and to upload the image to this folder. Okay, and you can do this uh, now, if you need, you want to do it later today, that's fine. But uh, please upload whatever notes that you took. And if you have more than one page, try to upload it as one document. I think we talked about an app that allows you to do that. We can talk about it again if we need to. But try to uh, just upload one file of your notes that you took from today's uh, listening. All right, my friends. I'm sharing my screen. I'm going to open up Notion. Remember that everything we're doing in Notion here, um, most of the activities can be found here. And uh, we, here, we are... Uh, on November 13th, this is where these are the activities that we're focusing on today. Now, I'm opening up Famous Person 4, okay? This is the fourth day now that we're working on this assignment. And I've included a video here that you can check out later. I'm going to talk about it right now. But I also included it here for you to review. This is how I'm giving feedback for this activity. Again, I'm being very specific in what I'm asking for. What I did um, yesterday was I went through the first, I started at the top. Okay, so this was not, I, I didn't select anyone in particular. I just st started at the very top of my screen and I worked my way down. And I listened to each of the videos until I got to one that included the following. One setup for each specific open question to the famous person. And the setup occurred at the beginning. It, it occurred before the question. All right, so I was looking through each of these videos until I came to one that I felt had done it correctly. And so in this case, Jesus was the person that I came across. So I'm telling you this, everyone, because I want you to see the videos that I reviewed in determining which were correct right? Which ones were, had completed exactly what I had asked versus those who had not. I didn't check all of them. I didn't check all of the, the videos, but I want everyone to reflect on your video that you created for the, for the, uh, for the questions. 
as an interviewer and ask yourself, okay, first of all, am I including open questions? And open questions typically, typically begin with how or why, right? Not always. There could be some other question words, but it's not a, usually a one-word answer. So it's an open question, and it's specific. Now, what do I mean by specific? The famous person you're interviewing, right, you want to present a question that is very specific to that person. So if your person is a famous basketball player and you ask, well, why did you decide to become a basketball player? You can ask that exact same question to just about any basketball player. And that would be an example of a general question. What we want to try to do is present a specific question that you can't ask anyone else. Right? So you have to know something about the person, probably, to be able to ask a very specific question about something that occurred in that person's life. Right? So this is why at the beginning when we were first talking about coming up with questions, we thought, well, maybe we need to research. If we don't know a lot about this person, we might have to read up a little bit on this person in order to ask a specific question. Now, th if you do this well, the person you're interviewing is going to feel flattered. They're going to feel good because they know you know something about them instead of just someone who doesn't know anything about the famous person asking a question. We've probably seen examples in real life where that has happened. And I know I've seen famous people almost get annoyed to some of the questions that they're being asked because it's clear that the interviewer doesn't know much about the person. So this is what this activity is about, is to how can we be specific and how can we set up a question, right, in order to reveal that we know something about the person. Now, here's a tip in how you can try to make your questions more specific. Look at the keywords that you're using in the setup. The setup is there to provide context, to provide something maybe a story about, you know, some something that happened that was significant and use some of those key words in your question. Right? That's that's what I would do. That's how I would try to make it more specific. Right? And you can ask yourself, well, can I ask this question to any other actor or any other sports figure, any other artist? And if you answer, no, I can't, I can't ask this to anyone else, then you know that it's a specific question. It's not too general. All right, so try to look and listen to your own video. And this is why I haven't responded to everyone who has sent me messages. Can you take a look at my video? Because I want you to try to listen to what we're talking about in class. And also, I want you to compare not only your own performance, not only the your own video where you ask questions, but take a look at some of your classmates and ask yourself, well, what, what, what is not exactly right in their videos as you're asking the same about your own video? All right, so this activity is almost um quiz like in that i want you to try to understand the instructions understand the feedback that i'm providing and you self assess self evaluate your own performance for the final product for the final um you know video and i totally expect uh some of you to redo the the videos Right? If it's not right, just redo it again. It'll take probably two, two and a half minutes. I think that's been about the average that I've seen uh, where, where the, you're including 
a setup and a question. If your video with four questions is like 30 seconds, you're probably not including a good setup or any setup at all. Again, it doesn't have to be long. If you want to include an introduction, that's fine, but I'm not asking for an introduction. In Jesus' example, he does not include an introduction, which is fine. Right? But if, you, if it feels more natural for you and you just want to do it, great. Go for it. That's great. Do it. But what I'm really looking for is how you develop your setups and try to use the setups to help you write a more specific contextual question. This is really what this activity is about. Now, how to answer the question. All right, we haven't really talked much about the answer, and of course we're, we want good answers, but let me review again what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for in the answer to the question, and you only have to answer once. I'm only asking everyone to present, you know, to interview one set of questions, right? One video for the questions and one video for the response. That's, that's it. Now your response as a famous person, remember that you are role playing. You are pretending you are acting like you are the famous person. So I ask everyone at the very beginning, the very first thing that I ask was choose a famous person living or dead that you admire, that you like, that you know something about. Okay. So it, you don't have to do much research. You don't have to read much if you don't, you know, if you don't have to. So when you're answering these questions, I want you to assume that you're the famous person and I want you to answer as if you were that famous person, right? So the questions are going to be in the second person. How do you feel about this, right? Or why did you, et cetera. And then when you answer, you can say I, right? I, and you're assuming you are the famous person. You are Michael Jackson, right? Et cetera. Try to assume the person and answer as if you were that person. You don't have to answer all of the questions. You can answer any one or uh, a combination of questions, but try to answer uh, coherently and cohesively. Now, what do I mean by coherently and cohesively? Coherently is organize your ideas. If it helps, write down your ideas beforehand. Write it as an outline. You can write it as a map, right, to guide you into your ideas, how what you want to say. But don't write out and don't read word for word what your response is going to be. Create the language and try to organize your ideas. Try to write or try to uh, speak and present your ideas in an organized fashion, right? That's speaking coherently. When you're speaking and there's no order to the ideas, like you're jumping all over the place, then you're speaking incoherently. And it's hard to understand what you're saying because you're all over the place. So organize your ideas, coherence. Cohesion is how you connect ideas, transitions, right? Use the use of sentence connectors. First, I would do this. Second, I would do this, right? First, second, third. Then I did this, right? And because I did this, you can use because, however, or but, right? To show contrast. So think about how you can connect your ideas. So that's basically what we want to try to achieve for this assignment. I want to give you guys a few minutes. We've got about, what, 20 minutes left for today. Um, so continue working on your video. Again, I don't want to give direct feedback to any of your videos because this exercise, this activity, is designed to for you to focus on the listening of the instructions and the comparison, what, I, what I'm sharing with you, what I'm revealing, by you listening to some of your classmates, you getting an idea 
to understand, okay, what's right, what's wrong, what what is, you know, what is according to the instructions and what is not. Okay, so this is the idea, right, for this activity. Go ahead and begin working on this. If you guys have questions, jump right in, ask your questions. Um, and let's try to finish this. If you have completed this, if you feel that your video is fine and you're done, great. If you want to redo it, I strongly recommend that you redo the video if you need to redo the video. Once the instructions, the uh, not the instructions, the uh, questions have been uploaded to Flipgrid, then you can respond to your partner's interview questions. Right? Any questions, guys, about the activity? No, teacher. If it helps, take a look at Notion, uh, the page that I showed you here called Famous Person 4. And there's a video here as well if you want to review again uh, my feedback. Obviously, look at the class recordings from each of the days as well. But really try to uh, evaluate your video and then if you need to redo the video uh, so that you are including setups that open that begin uh, or lead into your your questions all right guys i'm going to go ahead and mute my mic i'll be online here of course we'll come back at 9 40 to close the class jump in if you have questions or you can send me a, a chat message thank you Okay, teacher. Okay, teacher. All right, my friends, it's 940. I'd like to go ahead and uh, conclude for today. Please make sure in the chat that you look at the, uh, the scoring. I've included uh, that as well in the Notion page for this uh, activity. I've also included the link to the Notion page for the famous person activity where you can find the video and other related information. So please check that out. And uh, just a note that I left here in the chat, um, if you need to redo the video and your partner has already responded, I would, um, I would uh, talk to the person and uh, let them know that you would like to redo your video I'm going to give everyone uh, to today to try to finish this activity. Again, I'm really being specific in what I'm looking for, specifically for uh, presenting the questions, the open questions. All right, so try to finish today. I'll start looking at them this weekend. And uh, I think we're off on Monday. So I hope you guys have a great weekend, an extended weekend. We'll come back on Tuesday to start Unit 4. And uh, we'll be focusing more on a conversational performance test next week uh, will be our focus. All right, guys. Any questions about the, the activity or anything that we've been uh, discussing? No. All right. Uh, well, have a great day today, guys. And have a good weekend. And I'll see everybody on Tuesday. Bye, guys. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. You too.